Hi everyone, I wanted to show you guys a quick run through of, uh, this is uh, Paul's log uh, from group 22. Uh, this is his first start idle log and I'll show, I just wanted to show you guys briefly how to look at one of these logs when you're looking at idle. And Paul's log, luckily for us, is pretty good. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty much as good as you can get except for um, the coolant temperatures. Not that they're bad, but they just don't show the thermostat opening and closing like we'd want to see because it's the first capture of the log. But let's take a look at it. So basically this is exactly what you'll see uh, when you import your log from the SCT. And so the first thing we want to do is make sure that we're looking at the right things because we're looking at way too much and not enough at the same time. And let me show you what I mean. So here you have the various axes that we're looking at. And you can see here these are all the different uh, actual values uh, that we can look at. And you can see here that we're only, look this is time on the bottom axis here, and we're only looking at 16 seconds, and the log is bigger than that. So let's fix this. We come over here, and we click on max for horizontal max. There we go. There's the whole log now. But again, now this is too much information. This is way too much. So we go down here, and you can see all these guys are checked off. We're looking at everything. So what we can do is just go to this minus uncheck all items little pencil guy and unclick it. And there, now we're just looking at... Uh, DTC, which is Diagnostic Trouble Code, that's the same as an OBD2 uh, error code. Um, we're looking and there are none, and that's great. That's what we want to see also. But let's look at the first thing, the most important thing here. We'll click on ECT, um, and then highlight it as well, because it'll scale that value into the window. And you can see here that the, you know, you've got this nice steady climb over about it's about 700 seconds here, the total log time. And it just kind of flattens out and stops at 180. And that's good. I mean, there's no overheating going on here. But what would be cool to see that I want to show you guys would be, you know, coming up to 180, climbing a little higher here, and then it'll come back down again. And so, you know, I'm going to go back and tell Paul to run another log and then start logging when he's already at 180 so we can watch that thermostat swinging uh, back and forth and make sure that... Um, the cooling system is, is functioning perfectly. I suspect that it is based on this 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 ramp, um, but until we see that opening and closing, that up and down of this uh, ECT value, which stands for engine coolant temperature, um, even though ECT is actually CHT, which is cylinder head temperature. So this value at 180 here doesn't mean the coolant itself is 180. It's hotter than that. It means the metal of the aluminum head is at 180 degrees. So don't get confused there. And it'll always be a bit higher. Uh, the, the, this value will be a bit higher than normal. So the coolant temperature is, is a little bit lower than 180. Um, so uh, so that, that looks great. Next thing we can look at is fuel source, which is what this thing is, fuel SR. And this is exactly what we want to see. In the very beginning stage, we want the value to be a 4, which is this value here. So you can, wherever you put this like uh, red line, the cursor, in other words, it'll give you the current value here, and then these min-max average are uh, for the whole log. So we want it to be a 4, and then as soon as we get up to about 98 degrees, it should switch to 0. And 0 means closed loop. Closed loop means that the system itself is, is adjusting fuel based on what the oxygen sensor the O2 sensor sees. So it's closing the loop in the system by getting feedback and then acting on it. If it's open loop, it's not getting any feedback. It's just blindly controlling fuel. With closed loop, which is zero, it's looking at the O2 sensor and adjusting fuel. And it's that adjustment, how much it adjusts, that we look at to see if there are any problems. So let's stop looking at fuel source again. We can uncheck it. The next thing we can look at is, this is IAC, Idle Air Control Duty Cycle, DC, Duty Cycle. And so it's a little solenoid that's actually opening and closing that's actually controlling the amount of air that goes into the engine. So the throttle lets a certain amount bypass, and it's steady state. The throttle doesn't move when you're not moving the throttle, surprise. Um, and the ECU uses this duty cycle, you know, 50%, 0%, 100%, to open and close this little solenoid to adjust the amount of air that it needs to keep itself running. So, and that, because that changes as, uh, based on environmental conditions, altitude, and temperature. So you can see that, you know, it's changed here over time. 
So it goes from about a 55, what's the max here, 57% duty cycle, it smooths out, and then we end up at, down at around a 48. And these are good numbers, because you want that duty cycle to be right in the comfortable range in the middle. You don't want to see 60s, you don't want to see 30s. You know, you want to see 40s and 50s. Uh, and everything will be hunky-dory there. Um, load, we don't want to worry about right now. Let's take a look, obviously, at RPM here as well. You'll see the RPM is matching pretty closely the IAC, which I've left turned on here. So we've got the RPM in orange, we've got the duty cycle here in red, and as the engine's warming up, it commands a higher idle. It wants to be a higher, just like a cold start idle, uh, and you used to kick it down with a carburetor. Well, the ECU does the same thing. It, keeps, it gives it a higher idle in the beginning when it's cold to warm things up, uh, and then it, and then it brings it down to a warm idle, uh, which is about uh, uh, 1050 is where we want it to be. And if you look at this RPM, it's hovering right around there. It's perfect. Um, it goes plus or minus about 75 RPM in either direction when it's controlling it. Um, and it controls the really rapid changes with spark, but that's just extra trivia. You don't need to know that at this point. So um, RPM's looking good. IAC is looking good. Uh, let's look and see what Paul did. Uh, let's see if we scroll down here. If we go to TPV, which is throttle position, you can see Paul did not touch the throttle, which is what we want during this idle log. And that his idle value there, there's a number between 0 and about 1,000, 1,024. Um, and it's a digital representation of the voltage at that throttle position sensor. And 172 to 195 is good for idle. Um, and, and we can adjust that. And this is what you actually adjust with a throttle stop to get your IAC into range if it's out of range. Um, but that's a, that's a much more advanced topic. Uh, but this is good. We can tell he did not touch the throttle during this stuff. And that's good. Let's take a look at V power, which is voltage. So yeah, uh, it's pretty jagged looking, but look at the values. Uh, we're not moving a whole lot. Uh, so these are very small changes. And overall, this is looking very good. He's charging well. You know, he's up at that 14, 14 4 ish uh, He's looking good there. He also was not rolling, so VSS should read nothing, which it does. That's vehicle speed sensor. Uh, so let's take a look at his fuel trims now, the thing I mentioned before. So what we can do is we start, we can, we can fire up the short-term fuel trim. And if you can see this thing, you can see here's a section where the fuel trims, there's this line, right, where the fuel trims are going up. They're going from about 0.71 all the way up to close to 1. And so the fuel trims all are based around 1. And short-term fuel trims, which is this abbreviation here, means the instantaneous fuel trim, the thing that the engine's actually doing right now. There's another thing called long-term fuel trims, which is here, long FT, right, uh, which is actually the learning part. This is where the ECU is learning the long-term trims. So what it'll do is, if there's a correction made in short-term fuel trims, uh, eventually they'll get loaded into, if, they, if they're consistent and it's always the same in one place, they'll get loaded into long-term fuel trims. So we can use both to diagnose what's going on and see what's going on. So if you look at long-term fuel trims, they're one. So nothing's happening with long-term trims for a, a while until actually this point over here at about 400-something uh, seconds and change. Um, so we'll just leave that off for the time being. But if you look at this curve, we're going from 71, so we're going with short-term trims, less than one is rich, means more fuel. Greater than one is lean, less fuel. So it looks like you know, we're going from a rich condition, which is exactly what we want at start, it's rich, and then it leans out over here. And if you remember what I said before about the short-term fuel trims and when it starts getting feedback from the O2 sensor, if we turn that on again, so we see that value again. Look at that. So there we go. There's the cold start where I said it was flying blind, and so there's the ECU just doing its thing. It knows I need to be richer, and I, based on cylinder head temperature slash ECT, uh, I'm going to raise... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lean out the fuel slowly over time, and then I'm, when I hit the right temperature, I'm going to flip into uh, closed loop and start looking at what the oxygen sensor does. And so that's perfect here. So that means, so you can see, it's flying blind up until this point here. 
and it does it has to make a very little minor correction to get there. So it's it's right where it thinks it is, which is great to see. So then you'll see all these little sawtooth guys, and the sawtooth guys are are, are in response to the oxygen sensor. And the oxygen sensor, what it does is it has a voltage and it'll swing back and forth as well. And it'll be a low voltage uh, for lean and it'll be a higher voltage for rich. And you can see, look at that, J just as you would expect. So in brown, we've got the O2 sensor voltage that's ramping up as uh, the blue uh, ECU, what it's doing with fuel as it leans it out. Um, we're getting closer and closer, and that's actually the oxygen sensor heating up, getting ready to go. And then when you see the sawtooth start pattern, that's in response to all these swings of the ECU. So let's see if we can actually zoom in on one of these things. There you go. Here's, now we've zoomed in on this, and you can actually see. You want to see this rapid oscillation from the O2 sensor. That's what you want. And you can see, here's the here's the ECU checking and correcting. So it's kind of generating this little wave tooth pattern. That's what we've programmed into it to do. And then, in, and then it sees how the O2 sensor reacts and swings and then will adjust overall based on that. But here's the rule. Here's the, so this is all kind of uh, too academic. The only thing you need to know about this actually is that the short-term fuel trims let me go back out to max here, that the short-term fuel trims are within plus or minus 10, 10%, meaning 1.1 or greater than 0.9 when you're at warm idle. Uh, likewise, long-term fuel trims, you don't want them to drift more than 10% combined. And long-term fuel trims, are it's fun because long-term trims, greater than 1 is rich and less than 1 is lean. So it's opposite um, from the um, from the short-term fuel trims. But this is a very good-looking log. He's well within range. If you look at his short-term trims, the max is is five percent over. Uh, the min is zeroed out completely. So he's he's in good shape. Um, and the average is one, which is what you want uh, for this for this idle. And again, for the long-term trims, average is ninety-nine. So perfect. He's 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 right under he's right under one by one percent. Um, yeah, this is this is what we want to see in an idle log. Um, I hope that was helpful. I rambled and I probably uh, explained a little too much and probably confused uh, people. And you probably have more questions than answers now, but there it is. Um, and uh, yeah, please send questions on this stuff as well. Submit them into the knowledge base. There's a form you can post into on our support section, or send them to me via email, and I'll. Uh, put up a video with some answers. Thanks.